There are two truths about the brain which blew my mind when I first learned them and changed how I do everything. Knowing these two things will help you also understand yourself and others so much better too, so you can be more effective at whatever you're doing. Over the last four years, I've been putting almost all of my free time, like a big nerd, into learning and studying functional neurology. And while there's a whole lot of really cool things about the brain that I've learned, and it gets obviously very, very complex, I decided to take the time to distill these two most important and super fundamental things about the brain into this video for you. First, we have to appreciate that your brain is in charge of everything that you do, right? And how you experience everything. You are able to move thanks to your brain. You're able to feel wind on your skin and sense when your stomach is hungry because of your brain. Your brain is responsible for making you breathe, for interpreting what your taste buds taste, and for what your posture is like, right? So whether it's physical, mental, or emotional, the brain is necessary for every aspect of our experience in this life as we know it. So now that we've established that, the first thing that you've got to understand about your brain, my brain, everyone's brain, is that it is wired to keep you safe. So why is this so profoundly important? Maybe you've even heard this before, but let's appreciate, for your brain, being safe means surviving in this moment and that's it. It's totally binary. There are things in this life, obviously, that are very complex and they are neither black or white, but some shade of gray. But when it comes to this matter of the brain, it is one or t'other. Your brain either feels that you're safe or it feels that you're threatened. End of story. And if your brain feels threatened, you'll know about it because you're gonna get some response to that threat that your brain thinks is gonna help you survive. And these threat responses, which for your brain look like safety, they look like survival, but to us, they look like something really unhelpful, uncool, unpleasant, because your brain isn't interested in you thriving, just surviving. It's not interested in how you're doing in five years or what your 10-year plan is. It doesn't care about five minutes from now. It only cares about now. It's very zen. It's very in the moment. <laughs> so here are some of the ways that this might show up. For example, you're trying to learn a handstand and you can kick up to a wall, no problem. But as soon as you try to kick up to a handstand in the middle of the room, you're suddenly weak. It's like you've lost all your power and you can't get vertical. This is because your brain is in charge of how much force is applied in your muscles to help you jump. The brain controls the muscles. And if your brain doesn't feel like it's a good idea for you to go into a handstand, then it stops you. Or let's consider this. You're driving along and there's a cat that runs out in front of you, so you slam on your brakes. The driver behind you has to slam on their brakes, almost rear ends you. And then they pass you and they make all these like rude gestures at you and they're like, at you, and that's because their brain felt threatened, scared, by almost hitting you, and so they reacted with anger. Most likely, I like to think after a few minutes, that driver reflected back and thought, whoopsie, I was very rude to that person. Another example, a few years ago, my left foot got bitten by a shark, true story. Then, about a year later, I injured it climbing, and I had to have surgery on it. So for a couple of years, I really struggled to balance on that left foot, where balancing on my right foot was easy. That's because all that previous trauma that occurred in my left foot and ankle meant that my brain had, first of all, become overprotective of it, and it felt endangered if I was relying on just this one leg to hold me up. Or how about this example? You go to a dance class for the first time and you can't get the steps. Then you feel this unshakable sense of embarrassment that prevents you from going back to the class or at least wanting to go back to the class. And that's because your brain equated not getting the steps to not being able to fit in and not fitting in with our fellow humans means rejection, which means we're not safe because we can't survive alone. You get it? Literally, you can look at any and every unwanted emotion, thought, feeling, reaction, sensation in your body and trace it back to your old brain interpreting something about that situation as threatening. Then the threat response is your brain saying, 
I'm gonna get you back to safety. Remember, your brain doesn't care about you thriving. It could not care less about you being able to get that handstand or being the best dancer or being able to balance on one foot. The way your brain sees it, if you're curled up in bed, not doing anything that puts you at any risk, then you're safe and its job is done. And this is why we self-sabotage. This is why we choose short-term pleasure like scrolling through social media on the sofa instead of doing the disciplined work that creates long-term benefits such as going to yoga every day. This is why we basically lie to ourselves. We have all these cognitive biases because it feels safer in the immediate moment to stick to a simple belief than to entertain complex ideas. Maybe you can think of something now Something that happened maybe just before you clicked this video. It could be something really small, like the pain that you felt, because yes, pain is another threat response, when you got a paper cut. Or it could be something a little bit bigger. Maybe you made a rash decision around money because financially you're not feeling very safe. When you can start to look at everything that both you do and others do through this lens of safety versus threat, you'll start to see the world in a whole new way because then you have an understanding about what to do about it. And I'm gonna to get to that, but first, let's discuss the second truth about the brain that I wish everyone understood. Your brain is a prediction machine. Of course, our whole biology is set up how it was when everything was scarce, like food, and we might have to walk for miles to get water, and well, one thing that wasn't scarce was danger, right, from animals and the, elements and other humans and so on. And our brain is the most energy sucking organ of the body. Your brain uses a huge amount of energy that you get from the food that you eat and the oxygen that you breathe. So in order to save energy, your brain is wired to rely on patterns. You see, we can break down all of neurology into three steps. First, input. So that is where your brain takes all of the information from the outside world as well as within your body. So for example, if I'm in the woods and I see a bear and I see a man, no, that's, that's not a good example. We all know where that's going to go. I know. Okay. So I'm kicking up to a handstand. So my brain is getting this information about my body going upside down, increased weight on my hands, my legs up in the air, all that kind of stuff. Then the second step is the interpretation, deciding if that information that it's getting means if I'm safe or if I'm in danger. And it does this through pattern recognition. It kind of always is asking itself, have I seen this before? Have I experienced this before? What do I know about it? What happened last time? And then the third step is the output. That's your thoughts or whatever movements or any other reaction that you have based on that interpretation. So if my brain remembers that, hey, the last like 10 times at least that I kicked up to a handstand, I was using the wall and my feet were slamming into that wall. And if that wall wasn't there, then I would have fallen. Then it's going to produce an output of decreased strength and mobility and power if I'm trying to handstand now in the middle of the room so that I don't potentially hurt myself. And this happens thousands of times per day as we go through our lives. We just don't notice it when the brain feels safe, right? Because that's when we don't feel anything uncomfortable in our body. We're feeling all good emotionally, confident, happy, everything's good. It's when we feel threatened that we know about it, right? That's when basically anything that's kind of crappy happens. Pain, nausea, fatigue, confusion, anger, frustration, embarrassment, all of these things and more, we're wired to pay attention to the things that could harm us. And the better your brain can predict something, the safer it feels. Think about it. Doing anything for the first time, when you have no clue how it's gonna unfold, it can be daunting, halting, scary. This is exactly why you may feel full of angst when your life has a lot of uncertainty in it, because your brain is unable to predict 
what's going to happen. That's why you start overthinking and worrying. That's just your brain doing its job of trying to predict when there's no available pattern to go by. And so why is this so mind-blowing? It's about those patterns. Because our brain loves to create patterns and then rely on those patterns. Patterns of movement, thought habits, categorizing complex things like people into simplistic little boxes. Because patterns are energy efficient, but also because we can more easily predict. So that's why making up your mind about something and sticking to that belief is so much easier than entertaining the viewpoints and opinions that may give you a broader view of that situation. It's why breaking out of your existing habits in the way that you move on your yoga mat, perhaps, may feel really uncomfortable and even unpleasant. It's why curiosity and open-mindedness are more rare, especially in adults, than strongly held beliefs and biases, right? And so what can we do about it? How can we take all of this stuff and use it to make our lives better and easier? Well, hopefully, if I've given you anything to think about so far in this video, then that awareness alone will change a lot for you. But there are two really simple, but also effective, things that we can do. First is just to notice. Notice any time you're experiencing some kind of threat response. So remember, that's just when things are kind of crappy, whether it's pain, loss of range of motion, impatience, anxiety, just check. Am I safe? Am I physically safe? And chances are, you are. If you're not, if you're actually like, oh my gosh, no, uh, I might die, then please get out of that situation and thank your brain for doing its job of keeping you alive. But most of the time, the brain is misinterpreting the information, or maybe it's even created this habit of kind of overreacting about something that's really small and, and making you super anxious about it. But um, this is where we get the new brain, the part of the brain that does help us thrive. Get that involved and tell yourself, I am safe. A breath helps too. But that doesn't always work, am I right? Like doing difficult movements such as getting the splits or learning how to handstand, right? So the other thing that you can do is give your brain more information so that it can better predict. The more information it has, the better it can predict. Thus, the safer it will feel and the better you will feel. So maybe that means move in more ways than what you're used to doing. Maybe going back to that handstand example, it means having someone help you actually fall from a handstand. So your brain has information about what it feels like to fall and then it's gonna feel safer about falling. One of the treatments for low back pain is movement of the low back because gently moving through the low back gives the brain information from your joints and your muscles and your skin about what's happening there. And at this point I'm realizing that my little video here could get really, really long as I go down the rabbit hole of all of the ways that our brain could feel threatened and how we could give it more information to make it feel safe. And that's actually what I do in my neuro yoga teacher training. So if you're interested in that, please let me know. I'm happy to answer any questions about that. But we'll leave it there. Let me know if you enjoyed this video, if it helped you at all, if you have any questions. And it helps me so, so much if you leave a little comment, even if it's just a thumbs up. It helps me build this channel and reach more people. Make sure to hit subscribe as well. Share this with your friends and family. And I'll see you again, my friend.